Welcome to On Microsoft. Conversations with thought leaders in Microsoft technologies. Uh, I'm Scott Wiltemuth. Uh, um, I'm a, a program manager architect working on future languages at Microsoft. I've been involved since the early days of C Sharp, and really since the uh, kind of moment of conception or inception, I should say. <laughs> uh, um, and it's been just a, a real joy uh, working on that and now producing kind of the, the third version of the book. Well, I'm Anders Heilsberg. I'm a technical fellow uh, at Microsoft and uh, the chief architect of, of C Sharp. And like Scott, I've been involved since the beginning. Uh, so all three versions, and soon to be four, of, of C Sharp. And I'm Matt Torgerson. I'm the program manager for the C Sharp language. And I've only been here for three years. Before that, I worked on something that started with J. <laughs> What's new in the third edition of the C-sharp programming language? Uh, obviously, uh, it's about a new version of the language. So there's a bunch of just new material in terms of talking about those extra language features, obviously. Uh, but we've also uh, gone to great lengths to restructure the material. The previous versions of the book uh, were sliced into version-specific uh, chapters. And with the third version coming up, that didn't really scale. So we've reshuffled the whole material to be topic-based and to not sort of reflect the history of the language, but the structure of the language. So that, I think, is that's probably the major um, change to the structure of the book. And then we also have um, a whole new concept in, in, in this book of having a bunch of annotators, uh, external people, Microsoft people and non-Microsoft people, write all sorts of great advice and commentary on the language uh, where it fits in the chapters and giving a, a different perspective on the material uh, on top of sort of the slightly dry specification style text that's already in there. And it would be fair to say to Matt that the lion's share of the work on, on this one, you know, Scott and I worked on version 1.0 and, and 2.0 of the book. Uh, Matt did a bunch of the editing uh, in 3.0. I had good material to work with. <laughs> what are the new features? Well, I mean, 3.0, the, the, the biggest thing in 3.0 is, is, is this thing we call language integrated query or link, uh, which is about adding first class support in the C Sharp language for query set operations and, and transformations on any kind of data, be it uh, in memory object graphs or relational data in a database or XML documents. Um, now, the way we actually built Link, it's really an amalgam of seven or eight new language features, which are documented in the book, uh, things like extension methods and anonymous types and type inference and, and so forth, uh, that all sort of come together to form this concept called uh, language integrated query. Uh, so that's, I would say, the, the big new thing in 3.0 and the, the thing that was not documented in the previous editions of the book. Who should buy this book? Well, the book's really, um, it's really the definitive reference for the language. And um, so we, we've written it with uh, kind of uh, language implementers in mind. Like, so if you're a compiler writer and you want to know the exact rules for this, it's a, it's a great resource for folks doing that. And that's a, you know, percentage wise, that's a pretty small portion of the, of the, of the readers, but it's also for the developers who really want to know precisely how the language works, precisely what the language semantics are. Um, and there are lots of other books that are kind of the, the how-to and getting started and learning to program kind of books, which are a great complement. But this is really the definitive word on how the language itself works. Right, right. And literally, this book is uh, a publication of the internal specifications that we work with in C-sharp. This is literally the specification that the compiler implementers inside Microsoft have used to implement the, the compiler. Although, I mean, arguably, we've gone back and forth a little bit when, you know, implementing a compiler, you figure out, well, you know, the spec doesn't actually say how I'm supposed to do this. Well, fine, then we'll have to go back and add that to the spec. So, so, the, so the book is the true specification of the, of the language. Um, and like Scott said, it's not really a tutorial. Uh, there are better tutorials than this book, but there are no other books that are as complete in terms of covering the language. You can only have one definitive reference, and this is <laughs> it for the language. What motivated C Sharp 
Well, I, I think so. So C Sharp 3 OS, as we talked about before, is all about this thing called language integrated query. And language integrated query really, um, I, I've sort of always viewed it as it's, it's about solving the big impedance mismatch between general purpose programming languages and databases. Uh, if you look at how literally every, every enterprise app that, that gets written today on the .NET platform has some parts that are written in a general purpose programming language like C Sharp or VB, uh, and some parts that are written inside the database environment like store procedures and, and whatever in SQL Server, for example. Um, and by themselves, these environments are incredibly rich and have incredibly rich tooling or, or, or around them, but, but the way they interact is actually really kind of clumsy. Uh, often, you know, the APIs you have to use to talk between database and programming languages are, are, are strange and, and, and very low level. You know, you put queries in strings, they're not checked by the compiler for, for correctness. And the two systems are fundamentally different. You know, one is about object-oriented programming, the other is about the relational algebra. And, and you know, where they meet, there's a lot of dissonance. And with Link, we've tried to erase that and really make some of the core concepts that are in databases be first class in your programming language. And that particularly means query, set operations, and transformation. So, so this notion that, you know, in order to query something, you have to write it in SQL. Well, now you just write it in C Sharp. Indeed, C Sharp 3.0 has, I would say, the expressiveness of SQL or X query burned right into the language as native syntax. And you can apply this expressiveness to in-memory data structures without even having to have the data in a database. You can write queries that are fully as rich as those you write against relational data. Um, so that's sort of the motivation, I would say, or the problem that, that we specifically tried to target. Now, it turns out that C Sharp 3.0 ended up being about adding a lot of functional programming language constructs to the language because there was a bunch of rich research that we could harvest <laughs> uh, and learn from and implement in, in, in C Sharp, you know, that had gone, gone on for the last many decades in academia around functional programming and, and Queries are actually very much a functional construct. And, and so, so we ended up, in a sense, turning C Sharp into a hybrid of an object oriented and a functional programming language in order to implement language integrated queries. Any advice on becoming a better programmer? I would definitely advise that you stay curious. You take a look at a lot of different programming languages, a lot of different environments. Uh, a lot of different books that suggest uh, patterns and practices. And in general, explore a much wider area than you immediately need so that you, you, know, you get more inspired and you have more things to choose from when solving a particular problem, more ways to navigate. Mm -hmm. um, and just keep your brain fresh and, and curious. Yeah. Kind of like adding more tools to the toolbox so that when, you're, when you encounter a problem, you have several different approaches that you can yeah. You can bring the bear on the problem, yeah. yeah. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education. <laughs>